Hello, welcome to another instructional video from EGIS Associates. Today we're going to talk about the GISP certification and how to earn it in basic terms. We'll talk about some of the basic methods or requirements for uh, obtaining the certification. And in later videos, we'll go into greater detail about all of those specifics. If you want to know more about what the GISP certification is and where it came from, please make sure to check out our previous video, the GISP certification, what is it and where did it come from? And we'll provide a link for that in the video description below. So as you may remember, for those that watched the previous video, the GISP certification process uh, has two basic components. You've got to complete a portfolio and you've got to complete an exam. And you have an entire six year window once you start the process to complete the certification, right? So typically what's going to happen is you uh, pay your application fee and then you're gonna choose to take the exam initially and complete the portfolio second or if you've been in the profession already for a while and been out of school, you may do the portfolio first and then take the exam second. The order doesn't matter. Once you pay the application fee and start the process, you have that six year window to complete it and then you're certified for three years. So typically what we expect for people obtaining the certification is a step process that looks something like this. First, you're going to go to the uh, GISCI website, which is www.giSCI.org, and create a user account. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. There's no cost involved in creating that user account, and it does not start the six-year window. You can then begin populating information into your portfolio, your education, your experience, professional contributions, and so on, and just go ahead and start putting that into uh, your user account. And again, there's no cost to do that, and it doesn't start the clock. It's not till you pay a fee to either take the exam or submit your portfolio that that clock is gonna start. So if somebody's just coming out of college, we would expect that you'd probably take that exam first because that knowledge, that theory is still pretty much in your head. And so you'd, you'd go ahead and pay the fee and take the exam. Once you've done that, that's when the clock starts at six year uh, window. Once you've passed the exam, then you're gonna go on and complete and submit your portfolio. And again, there's a fee for that. And if you're going in this order, then once you've submitted your portfolio, that's going to end the clock because by then you should be certified. There should be no question when you submit your portfolio whether you've got enough points or not uh, to have that completed. Once you hit submit, you should be pretty much well in mind that uh, you've got that accomplished. Okay, so where do we go to create our portfolio or I'm sorry, our user account on the GISCI website? So first you go to the GISC homepage, www.gisci.org. And at the top here, you'll see where it says register. You click here and you just create your user account. Uh, again, this doesn't start the clock. This doesn't cost any money. You can do this at any time uh, if you're looking at moving towards having your GISP certification. Once you've done that, then you'll log in. Once you've logged in, you go click on the GISP application and renewal. This is going to provide you with some basic information about starting your portfolio, uh, information from Bill Hodge, the executive director, and then you can click application. And this is where you'll start filling in the information for your portfolio. So for education, experience, professional contributions, this is also where you can download required forms, such as your ethics forms and your supervisory letter, which we'll talk about in later videos. So it's very easy to go in and set this up. If you have questions on how to fill this out, you can download the procedures manual from here, and that'll provide guidance on the various requirements for your education experience and contributions. So see, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Uh, I would recommend as you're filling this out and uploading documents that you keep a backup copy of any supporting documents like your transcripts and things of that nature that you'll have to upload. But there you have it. That's uh, where you go to set up your user account on GISCI and begin filling in your portfolio. So now let's go back 
and keep looking at what it takes to earn the certification. And then once you are certified every three years, you're going to need to recertify. And we'll talk about that in uh, a little bit. So what are the, the full requirements for the GISP certification? Well, first, you have to have worked in the GIS industry for four years of full-time equivalency. Now, that doesn't mean you have to do all four years in one cut. You can do some part-time combined with some full-time or all part-time. It just has to equal four years of full-time equivalency of working in the GIS industry. So maybe, for example, you're a planner that does GIS. Well, maybe if 50% of your time is spent doing planning and 50% of your time is doing GIS, then it would actually take you eight years to meet that full-time equivalency. And you may be thinking, well, I only have six years. There's a six-year clock. How can I do eight years and still get it? Well, remember, the clock doesn't start ticking until you've submitted something, until you've taken the exam or you've submitted your portfolio. You can count anything you've done during that six years and prior to it. So you're not just limited to accomplishing everything in the six year window. It's just the six year clock, the, the timetable, the ticking time bomb, as it were, doesn't start until you've either taken your exam or submitted your portfolio in whichever order you choose to, to do it. So you can go back as far as you need to, to meet that requirement. So very possible to do. Once you've achieved your uh, time requirement, then you're going to need to have points and you need 150 points spread out across three areas, education, experience, and professional contributions. We'll talk a little bit more about those in a moment and we'll have dedicated videos on each one of those areas to explain what you can count, what can't count, and, and so on. You also need to agree to a code of ethics and rules of conduct. So as part of being a certified professional, you need to agree to follow those and then use those as guiding documents on what you can and can, cannot do as a certified professional. And that's a pretty common thing in, within any profession. And of course, you need to pass the exam. That exam was added in, in um, 2015. And so everybody since then has got to take that exam in order to earn the certification. So we'll now start with talking about the portfolio briefly. And I mentioned you have to have 150 points. At a minimum, you need 30 points in education, 60 points in professional experience, and eight points in professional contributions. Those are the minimum number of points. Then that leaves 52 points that you can flex between any of those three categories till you achieve the minimum required 150 points. And you may think, where did that number come from? That number came from a benchmark that was established by ERISA and then GISCI that equals a, a person having a bachelor's degree with some GIS courses. Now, keep in mind that the time that the GISP was created, there were very few, if any, GIS dedicated degrees. Now we have dedicated GIS or geospatial degrees, so meeting those minimum requirements are, are very easy. But back uh, before those existed, it was a little harder, and that's why any degree is accepted, because in the past, uh, people had to get a degree in planning or surveying or uh, geography and take some GIS courses because there wasn't GIS degrees available. Next, that four years of FTE, you know, working full time, doing GIS work, that's where that number came from. And then professional contributions, those eight points, is just very modest participation in the industry. You are a member of a professional organization or two. You went to a GIS conference and presented. Uh, you took part in a map contest or something with GIS Day. Just very minimal participation within the industry and the profession, trying to share a little bit of what you know with others. So again, not hard to, to meet those. Now, a lot of times when we start looking at the portfolio, people get concerned that, oh my God, how am I going to get all this information? I've got all this documentation. Well, first, you know, there's no benefit to documenting a high point total. So that if you've worked in the industry for, like myself, over 25 years, you don't have to document your entire career. Just start at your um, 
the most current and work your way back until you've reached that 150 to 200 points. I do encourage you to go above the 250, or I'm sorry, the 150, because it is a subjective review. The reviewers looking at that portfolio are all people, and we don't have the same experiences, and sometimes where we one person may think something should count, another person may not. And yes, there is guidelines from GISCI on some of that, but it's still ultimately the call of the reviewer. So uh, I would recommend going up, maybe not 25%, but just to be comfortable if you wanted to, uh, just make sure you, you're well above the, the minimum. I'd right? say so if you can get to 200 points, you're probably golden. So just remember, just start at your current, work your way back till you got the, the number of points. There's no need. I've seen applications that had three, four, five, 600 points. And there's no reason for that. You don't become a super GISP for having a whole lot of extra points. Uh, plus, as a reviewer, we're going to make sure you've reached the minimums. And once we validated all that, we stop. We don't go back through everything you put in there uh, because, well, we have lives. <laughs> and, and reviewing those applications is a volunteer thing. So just keep that in mind as you're working on your portfolio, you don't have to, to go your entire career, okay? Now, a little bit about the exam. Uh, it is computer-based, right? So you're going to have to go to a testing center. GISCI works with PSI to provide the exam. So you have to go to one of their facilities, which they are worldwide. So you shouldn't have too much problem finding a center that is relatively close to you unless you, you know, live way off in, in a rural area or something like that. But it is computer based, meaning that you go in there, you sit at the computer, it is proctored, you cannot take in any sort of electronic devices. Uh, they will provide you with your with some sort of scratch paper or dry erase sheet or something like that. And you're not going to have any GIS software installed on these computers. The only thing you can access is the exam. So you won't be able to open up a browser and go to Google. You're not going to be able to launch QGIS or ArcGIS or anything like that. Also, keep in mind the exam is not software specific. So it's not going to ask specific questions on how to do things in, for example, QGIS or GRASS or ArcGIS. It's going to be very generic in nature. As far as the length of the exam, it's anywhere from 175 to 195 questions. Most recent exams have been multiple choice and multiple answer, but they do have the potential to have true or false in future exams. Now, with all the questions on there, GICI is only scoring 100 of those questions. Now, you'll have no idea which ones are scored and which ones are not but they only score 100 of them. The remaining questions are there for testing, validating for future exams, right? Uh, but like I said, you'll never know uh, how to do that. And you typically, depending on the number of questions, will have anywhere from three to four hours to complete the exam, which should be more than enough if you're, if you're ready. And they're gonna offer this exam twice a year, at least that's the way they've done it so far once in the summer and once in the fall winter time frame. They, they just offered it at the beginning of December this year, 2018. Uh, they, I think, are planning again June, July of 2019, and they'll continue that uh, cycle going forward. Now, once you have your certification, every three years you're going to need to renew it. Now, every year you're going you're gonna to pay the $95 fee but then every three years, you're going to have to submit all the education, professional contributions, and experience points so that you get a minimum of 24 over that three-year period. And uh, again, in education, six points is the minimum. Professional contributions, six points is the minimum. There is no minimum on experience. They so really want you to focus on education and professional contributions for the renewal process. And again, we'll go into more details about the renewals in a later video. Uh, if you have not renewed in six months of the, your expiration date, uh, you will have to go through the entire process of certification again, which means you'll have to do the portfolio, take the exam and pay all the fees all over again. I have heard that they're being a little flexible with that and actually going out to 12 months 
on that. Uh, but the hard, the, the, I guess the standard rule is six months. So if you don't want to have to go through all this again uh, to recertify, just make sure you maintain it. It's not overly hard. So I hope that's helped. Uh, hopefully that's answered a few of your questions about the GISP and the basics of how to earn it. As I mentioned, we'll be doing follow-up videos on specifics with the portfolio and even the exam and renewal uh, in, in the future. So look forward to those. Make sure if you like this video to, to give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, you know, give it a thumbs down. I hope you don't do that, but it's there if you, you do. Also, if you have any suggestions for future videos, we're hoping in 2019 to really expand our videos. Um, I'm planning a couple of hardware reviews uh, on some maybe GPS equipment. We're also looking at potential building a computer. So for those that haven't built a computer, actually building a system, um, I'm beginning to assemble parts now. We're going to build a Ryzen system. And then we'll go through all the components uh, with that. It's been a long time since I've built a computer myself, but hopefully that will be some fun and help to educate folks. So with that, if you need any help with your GIS, CGIS Associates is here. We can help you with enterprise implementation or even basic implementations, systems integration, strategic planning and needs assessment. So if you're looking to implement ArcGIS Pro and not quite sure how that's going to impact your current uh, implementations and what you need to change, we can certainly do that for you. Uh, provide you with Renatech -Tech services for on-site staffing or remote services and, of course, training and support. So with that... I hope everybody has a wonderful and happy, safe new year. And please feel free to reach out to us and we'll see you next time. Thanks.